Welcome back onto our spotlight then for this evening. The government released last week the income tax report for the past 16 years and the provisional figures for 2014-15 showed that just about 4.87 crore people seem to have filed their tax returns, making it less than 4% of the total population. In the years before that, the number of those who paid taxes is even less. In 2012-2013, for instance, the figure was close to only about a percent of the population. I'm now joined by corporate tax lawyer H.P. Ranina. Thank you very much, sir, for joining us here on The Big Picture. So tell us, I mean, you know, your first observation, because how dire is this problem when we have a country, you know, with, with major developmental agendas and government looking at, 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 at raising revenues, less than 4% seem to be paying their taxes. How big a problem do you, do you see this being, sir? Well, actually, only 4% of the people file the tax return, and the people who pay taxes are even less. And those who pay taxes, they pay a negligible amount. Now, this is something which is uh, really surprising, because in a large country like India, where millions of people mm -hmm. spend huge amounts of money just on their mobile bills, telephone bills, and other expenses, people who travel abroad, last year, more than 4 million passengers traveled between Bombay and Dubai, and Delhi and Dubai. Now, this itself shows that mm -hmm. there's massive tax evasion in this country, and the government mm -hmm. department is simply not in a position to track down the tax evaders. Now, these are issues which need to be sorted mm -hmm. out. You can't just allow this to happen. Right. Uh, people talk Absolutely. about black money abroad, but as the, uh, the, 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 the chair, vice chairman of the SIT said, the black money abroad is because there's black money in India. There's black money right under right. your nose unaccounted money right. that you're sitting on right under your nose and that's nothing is being done and there are millions of people who openly spend money and they don't care a damn about right. it absolutely sir and if you were to stick to that point of evasion sir and, and if you were to go by the assessment year 2012 2013 and from there we can basically extrapolate you know these are numbers that i want the viewers to digest because it shows that people having income of over one crore rupees only 7515 people file returns for people having incomes in the range of 5 crore to 10 crore rupees, only 655 returns were filed. And for people having incomes of over 25 crore rupees, a laughable 26 people only had filed their returns. So, sir, something is, 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 is seriously wrong, you know, with this, with this data that has been thrown up. I think so. Uh, no, there's nothing wrong with the data. The data is factual. But what is the implication of that data? That is the important thing. And the data shows that there is massive tax evasion in this country at every level. And this is where I think the government should now be able to crack down on people. Now, it has one of the ways to do so would be to track down on people who are constant flyers, who spend money on luxury cars. The simple question which the Revenue Department should ask is how many people who have cars file the tax return and actually pay tax? Because today to maintain a car with a high cost of their fuel and the cost of maintenance, it will cost a person at least 25,000 rupees a month just to maintain one motor car. And there are many families, many families who have multiple cars in this country today. Now the question is how many of these guys who are having so many cars or who travel abroad constantly how many of them file returns? What is the income which they disclose? And what is the tax which they pay? So you need to link up these issues. And it's very easy to do that now with computerization, with information technology being what it is. So why can't the government do this? I mean, why don't link up the people who have cars, link up with their ownership of cars with the taxpayer's return? Put that on the permanent account number. Why can't people's passport number be linked with your PAN number so that when people travel, they know exactly who has traveled and how much money is being spent. Today, even to get a, uh, just a visa for do you, which you have to spend 75,000 rupees sometimes yes. for certain countries. So the amount of money right. which is but being spent, as you know, India has the biggest mm. spenders. Singapore, yes. Hong Kong, Switzerland, they all try to attract Indians because they mm -hmm. know the Indians are the Absolutely. biggest spenders. Now, 90% of their money is being spent in cash. Despite the fact right. that the Reserve Bank now permits you to take any amount of money for current account transactions up to 250,000 yes. US dollars a year. But nobody spends right. uh, through officially because they, the money is spent in cash. And there are thousands Absolutely, of you know, uh, yeah. you know, 
professionals like doctors, surgeons, and others who just uh, take money in cash and never account for it. Absolutely, Sam. If I could just, in, in, and if I could just stick to the point, because the data somewhere shows that it seems that the that the large brunt of this of the income tax is actually being borne by the salaried people. So because because again, uh, if, if we were to stick to the assessment here for 2012-2013, um, 1.78 crore people out of out, out of about 4.8 crore people who have filed their income tax returns were in the salary bracket between five and a half, half lakh and nine and a half lakh bracket. Is that, a, is that a correct interpretation and reading of the data, sir? Well, that is a correct interpretation, but that only shows that it's only the salaried employees who don't have a choice, who don't have an option, because tax is deducted mm -hmm. at source. They are the guys mm -hmm. who are paying the tax, and they are the pay persons who are therefore filing the tax returns. But the question is, if there are, according to government estimates, something like 5.3 crore uh, businessmen, the question is, how many of these 5.3 crore businessmen file a return? How many of them show mm -hmm. losses in their return? And if they are showing losses, the logical question to be asked is, how do they live? If a man is making losses and there's no other source of income which he shows in his return, then how does he maintain his lifestyle? Now, these are indications right. which would clearly show that there's massive amount of tax evasion. Most of the loss-making units are, you know, just money which is siphoned out, not shown in the books of account. Right. Now, I've been telling right. the government right. time and again that you have to now go to a move towards a measure where you make it mandatory for people to disclose mm -hmm. all the income which they have received in their profession or business. And this is something which right. can be done right. if you want to track down the tax evaders. All right, because sir, for the longest time, the income tax department has been trying to plug these loopholes, has been trying to expand the tax base. Uh, you know, they've also made, you know, they've also come up with some very strong penalties, failing if, if you do not file your tax returns on time. But despite that, somehow that has not worked. Can you identify for us two or three of the key loopholes that you see in the, you know, in the system that we follow right now when it comes to disclosing and returning of income tax returns? As I said, the first important loophole is that there is no requirement in law which requires people to disclose the money which they have received in cash. Now, you can simply make a law to say that all receipts, gross receipts, have to be accounted for and put in your bank account. And if any person is found to have uh, uh, cash money outside his books of account, that will be deemed to mm -hmm. be his concealed income and that will be taxed at the maximum marginal rate of 30 percent mm -hmm. plus surcharge plus education sales. So this type right. of law needs to be made. Now, if you want, for example, goods and services tax to succeed, mm -hmm. again, the gross revenues have to be accounted for. Now, today, you know, every right. shopkeeper, when you go to a shop, he tells you that, look, if you want a bill, then you'll have to pay the VAT, 15%, 12%, 15%. And so people say, OK, don't prepare the bill and just uh, give me the money and you pay by cash. Now, unless this is stopped, mm -hmm. and that can be done only by proper legislation and proper monitoring, it's very easy to do. Mm -hmm. It's not that it's very difficult. Because today, it's right. difficult for people to just pick money in cash. And that, that's what they do all the time. 90% of all transactions are cash transactions, which has to be curtailed. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, for example, government can right. start by saying that everybody who wants to buy petrol, diesel, or CNG will have to pay only by a mm -hmm. credit card or debit card. Because all the petrol pumps right. are controlled by the government, HPCL, BPCL, IOC, etc. Mm -hmm. So why can't the government say right. that all petrol fuel, you start with that, you then make it mandatory for people to pay only by debit card or credit card when they go to a hotel, restaurant, bar, and you make it mandatory right. for people to pay only by way of uh, your debit card when they buy an airline ticket. Today, right. there are people right. like Amazon who clearly who openly you know, canvass and advertise that, people, that Indians love cash and they want cash on right, delivery. Sir, yes. Now, that has to be stopped. Yeah. All online payments should be made only to debit card, credit cards. Now, this is one way right, by sir. which you can bring down the utility of cash and thereby reduce tax evasion. Absolutely. And in fact, you know, the report also, you know, like, you know, clearly brings out, which is what you're also essentially saying, that the affluent in India are not paying their share of taxes. But what about the fact that, you know, over the last many years, we've seen the exemption limit, uh, you know, gradually growing up from 1.25 lakh rupees. Now it's, now it's gone up to two and a half lakh uh, rupees uh, uh, income per annum. And that 
has about over one crore people, and 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 it seems that the you know that the revenue foregone, the tax revenue foregone because of that is to the tune of thirty three thousand crore rupees. So, a word on the exemption limit, sir, that has been gradually going up. Well, the exemption limit is, uh, in a sense, linked with the inflation. And therefore, the government justifies it by saying that if there's a higher rate of inflation, that there must be a higher rate of exemption at the initial level. But the unfortunate thing is most people are taking advantage of this uh, higher exemption limits by splitting their income between the family mm -hmm. members. So, for example, today if there are four family members and each one shows two and a half lakh rupees, then 10 lakh rupees of household income is completely free of tax. So this is where mm -hmm. the government mm -hmm. should step in and make sure that the splitting of income among family members is, uh, is defeated. And that is where, right. the, otherwise the two and a half lakh rupee limit is not at all uh, is, is desirable because of inflation. But it's... Yeah. And uh, that is something which uh, where the loophole actually plays. Uh, Mr. Okay, I, I lost you at the last minute there, Mr. Ranina, but, uh, but my final question then to you is, what is the pitfall? What is the broader risk? Okay, I think we would have, we have unfortunately lost Mr. Ranina on the line, but important observations that are coming in from there, that the affluent clearly are not paying their share of income tax and something urgently needs to be done. Remember, as a country and, and, and pretty much everywhere else around the world, private investments are coming down, therefore the governments are trying to ramp up the public investments. But if they don't have enough funds and revenues, how on earth will they be making those investments? That is a long-term question and something that the government has been pondering over. We just hope that, that in the coming financial years that the tax base is broadened widely. We are completely out of time on this edition of The Big Picture. Thank you so very much for watching. Stay tuned to CNBC TV 18.